We're going to find the area of this shaded region, and you'll notice that you're not given ticks on the horizontal axis in this picture. So we have to recognize that this blue function, this cosine graph, has gone through half of its cycle at this x value right here. So this x value here must be pi. You can also think to yourself that the cosine of pi is negative 1, and hopefully that makes sense to you as well. So if this is pi here, then this is pi over 2, this is pi over 4, this is 3 pi over 4. If we're going to find the area of the shaded region, we actually need to do it with two separate integrals. One integral from x equals 0 to this intersection point, and the second integral from this intersection point to x equals pi. So we need to find the intersection of cosine of x and cosine of 2x. So we're going to set those two functions equal to each other. Now feel free to use technology to solve this, but if you're curious as to how to do this by hand, I'll show you in a few steps. I'll run through it pretty quickly, um, so get ready to hit pause on your video if you want to follow along. First, we can use a trig identity to rewrite cosine of 2x as 2 cosine squared x minus 1. The reason we do this is so that we don't have an x and a 2x as arguments in our cosine. It's going to be much easier to solve if we have all x's as arguments in our cosines. Then we can get everything on one side of the equation, and we can factor this right hand side. Now that this is factored and set equal to 0, we can split it into two pieces. 2 cosine of x plus 1 equaling 0 gives us cosine of x equals negative 1 half. The other piece gives us cosine of x equals 1. As far as our graph is concerned, the only solution that we see from cosine of x equals 1 is x equals 0. And you see that intersection point right here. As far as cosine of x equals negative 1 half, you'd have to break out your unit circle knowledge. But as far as this graph is concerned, the only solution to this equation that we see is x equals 2 pi over 3 right here. So now with all of this math completed, we are able to set up our integral for the area of this shaded region. Our first integral is going to go from x equals 0 to x equals 2 pi over 3, and we're going to take the integral of the top function minus the bottom function. And it looks like I'm going to write out a space here, so I'm going to move this down just a little bit. To find the area of this second piece of the shaded region over here, we need to integrate from 2 pi over 3 to pi. And again, we're going to integrate the top function minus the bottom function. Now we need to integrate. Integrating cosine of x gives us positive sine of x. Integrating cosine of 2x gives us 1 half sine of 2x. If you're wondering where that 1 half comes from, I'll explain it in just a second. As far as this integral over here is concerned, we have the same two functions. We just have different limits of integration to plug in. Okay, and in case you're wondering about the integral of cosine of 2x, what we did is a u substitution. We did u equals 2x, which gave us a du equals equals 2 dx. Then we can rewrite dx as a 1 half du, and this integral becomes the cosine of u times 1 half du. We can pull that 1 half out. Integrating just cosine of u gives us sine of u. And I'm skipping a step here, but then plugging u equals 2x back in gives us a final answer of 1 half sine of 2x for that integral. Okay, now I think it's time to plug in our limits of integration and get an answer. Let's plug in our upper limit of integration on this integral here. I'll also plug in our upper limit of integration on this second term. Now we need to subtract and plug in our lower limits of integration. Now recalling our unit circle, sine of 0, sine of pi, and sine of 2 pi are all 0. That's going to leave us with and then we have to remember that the sine of 2 pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2. And the sine of 4 pi over 3 is negative square root of 3 over 2. I need just a little bit more space to finish this problem. Simplifying gives us this right here. Notice that everything has a square root of 3 on it. So if you want to, you can think of this as the square root of 3 times the quantity 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 fourth plus 1 half. All of that adds up to 3 halves, so our final answer is going to be 3, square root of 3 over 2. That's an area, so that's going to be measured in square units. I'm going to zoom out so you can see all of the work that we did. In the next calculus problem of the day, we're going to start finding volumes. So I will see you there.